Designing Spaces, along with our friends at Chevrolet, presents Military Makeovers. Teaming up with companies from around the country, together we lend a helping hand to the families of those who served. These are families just like many found across the nation, facing tough times. But in each case, there is a loved one who has made a commitment to defend the United States of America. Designing Spaces and our allies move forward with a program of military makeovers with the express purpose to show our appreciation for those putting their lives on the line to keep our great nation free. of the Clark family and designing spaces is about to do what we do best a home makeover we're taking a military family's home and we're giving it something special that will benefit everyone that lives here but first let's meet the Clark family my name is Jonathan Clark this is my wife Rhonda my son Colin and this is Kara I was about to take off for my second deployment and uh, I went home to visit my mom who had just moved from Tennessee down in Jacksonville Florida and uh, that's where we met. Been together for 13 years now. Right now, I'm actually uh, the company first sergeant. I was recently promoted uh, and moved out here to fill the role of uh, uh, kind of an administrator. I'm an artilleryman by trade, so that's what I've been doing for the past 18 years. Uh, but now, I really focus on all those other things about being a Marine besides um, blowing stuff up. Uh, <laughs> I've been deployed six times overseas. I've been deployed to Japan, Iraq, Afghanistan. I've done a couple of Mediterranean uh, deployments. When they deploy, it feels like you're holding your breath for about seven months until the day they come back. And I finally, after three years of double deployment, back to back last time, can breathe. So it's nice. <laughs> Trying to pick up uh, where you left off is very, very difficult, but somehow, some way, uh, we make it happen. And there are countless Marines out there in the same boat that I am, and I love them all for it. Being a military family with six deployments under your belt just means you're a military uh, single mom with I, a paycheck, is what I say. Um, it has its ups and its downs. A lot of ups, but a lot of downs. Sometimes you forget how hard it is on your children because children are so resilient. His deployment in 2009 uh, we found out that Colin had Tourette's, and what sparked it was his deployment. Since we moved here, his daddy's been home, and he's actually done pretty good. So, very minor. How you feeling? Fine. What's next for us is, well, we're new here to the area, so uh, what's next for us is trying to get the kids settled into school. Um, get and into a routine. A routine. Uh, this is the first time in quite some time that I haven't been deploying or training uh, on a rigorous schedule, so we're just trying to reconnect with each other and reconnect with our children. Right now, Designing Spaces would like to thank the staff at Operation Homefront for making our military makeovers possible. They're the organization that chose the families for our makeovers. Who is Operation Homefront? Well, take a look. Operation Homefront is a military support nonprofit, and what we do is provide emergency financial and other kinds of assistance to our military families and to our wounded warriors. Mostly, when our service members are deployed, we're here helping take care of their families back home. Operation Homefront is a national organization, and we also have 25 chapters throughout the country covering 34 states. And so with those chapters that do so much great work interacting directly with our families and the support of our national staff, we're able to help our military families nationwide. Well, I'm a military mom. Uh, so when my sons decided they were going to serve our country, I talked to my husband and said, we need to find a military charity to get involved with. And Thanksgiving of 2007, uh, we went on the internet and started looking around and found Operation Homefront. Uh, that Friday, I called the national office and talked to some of their people and said to them, you know, we have some background in fundraising and we want to help you. Where's your Florida chapter? And I had a silence on the other end. They said, we don't have a Florida chapter yet. So uh, we put together a team. We have an excellent board of directors here in Florida. 
and we got started. We got our chapter in October of 2008, and we've been going ever since. Last year, we met over 167,000 needs, everything from emergency financial assistance, helping someone with their rent, with their utilities, with car payments, uh, and sadly, even food assistance. We've seen a really dramatic increase in the number of requests for food assistance. So you have a service member who is in harm's way, and meanwhile, their family back home is having trouble just putting food on the table. Well, obviously, in South Florida, we do much of the same things that all of our other chapters do. We provide emergency financial assistance uh, to families that are deployed or wounded, and we do a lot of morale activities. So we're right now, for instance, we're just finishing up our back-to-school drive where we harvest school supplies at Dollar Tree stores all around the, uh, the city uh, and state and bring them to local military installations or military families. I remember when you called us and said, you know, we'd like to do a military makeover and can you help us find some families? And the first thought was, wow, you know, where do you start? Um, there's so many families that you'd like to touch with that opportunity. Um, but we, we reached out to the community um, and asked for people to nominate. And actually, some of our families were nominated by their military support units, and others were nominated by relatives or friends. And uh, we found four very special families, each with a very special story. Uh, to be able to make a difference here in South Florida. The family's reactions to Designing Space's opportunity was, first of all, a little trepidation. You know, what am I going to do on television? Um, but once we told them how, what a great bunch of people you are and that you would make it easy, which you do, um, they were a little bit of excited. Um, it gave them an opportunity to do something uh, in their homes that maybe they didn't have the resources for or just never had the time to do. Operation Homefront and many of the other military support nonprofits out there do provide service to the active duty, uh, to the Guard and Reserve, and there are lots of great veterans organizations that help those that have been out for a long time. So that goes for anyone that has served this country in uniform. If you need help, please reach out and, and ask for that help. Anyone that wants to help a military family can go to our website, operationhomefront.net. You can find your local chapter and support locally, or you can actually look and see specific needs there of specific military families and choose to help a specific family. So we need help across the board. If you're a viewer watching this show today, no matter where you are in the country, know that there are lots of Operation Homefront chapters around the country, not just here in Florida. Go to our website, operationhomefront.net, and choose Find Your Chapter, and you'll find the chapter that's closest to you where you can get involved. Whether it's giving your time, which we all need a lot of, uh, or giving your talents and money, um, we'll have something for you to do. And it's a great way to serve your country and tell all those people who are currently serving how much you appreciate what they do. One of the rewarding experience about this is the opportunity to touch so many lives. Um, we are about to do our 1,000th financial assistance case. Um, you know, every one of those is a story, and those stories are right here. You know, in addition, we probably have helped three to 4,000 other people uh, by the other things that we do, the morale, the backpacks that we give away, the Thanksgiving meals that we deliver to families, um, the toys that we give away at Christmas. You know, that's a substantial monetary donation in terms of the value of the goods that we collect, um, but the ability you know, to make sure that a child who has just moved to Florida with their family, having transitioned from some other part of the country, uh, maybe they're living in a hotel at Christmas time. Um, you know, the money is tight. They haven't gotten reimbursed for their move yet. And uh, somebody gives a call and we're able to provide them with toys for Christmas time. You know, the looks on their faces are absolutely amazing. Right now, let's go inside and see how our military makeover is doing in the Clark family home. such great work. It's great to see you. Yeah. It's been fun. Absolutely. I'm so happy to see you. Well, you did a great, great job here. And I have to ask you, you know, looking at the before photo, 
What was your inspiration? What came to your mind to create this? Well, you know, the first thing we wanted to do, we talked with Rhonda and Jonathan, and this is the first time that they're not living in military housing. Right. So they have the ability to really personalize the bedroom and make it their own. Mm -hmm. It's a large space, you know, which is a nice, unique challenge to have. Um, and they really just needed some help getting started. It's funny because people might think, oh, a large room, I want that problem. But it is because you try to fill it with so many different things. It's Absolutely. true, and I think the size of the bedroom actually froze them a little bit in terms of what the next step would be. Right. So we started with basically an, an empty room with some pieces of really good furniture, mm -hmm. but no sense of the couple who lived here. Mm. So that was the challenge. And that's what you need to do. Okay, so what was the first thing that you decided to do? We actually painted the walls, and in a room this large, you can actually play with color a little bit. I don't know if you've noticed, but the back wall and all of the other three walls are actually the same hue, but different shades. I see that. I like that idea. So Usually it's a different color. I like using the same hue. You yeah, know? I'm not yeah. such a fan of the different colored walls, mm -hmm. but I think having the darker wall in the back really anchors the windows and the, ma and the headboard Absolutely. of the master bed. I agree. And Very the nice. other thing that we really wanted to do was, again, capture the spirit of what they were interested in from the perspective of color. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they both have different views on what might be the perfect color for the bedroom. Uh -huh. um, Rhonda's a little bit more bold and adventurous when it comes to color, and Jonathan wanted something that was a bit more neutral. So you got to tie those two together. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's a common, it's a common thing that we, we find often. Mm -hmm. Color is is frightening to some people. Mm -hmm. So right. what we did is we chose a very cool neutral palette, mm -hmm. and it goes from blues to steel grays to lavenders. The curtains are silver, which I love that idea, but yet nothing silver on the bedspread. No, actually the bedding is all blues and lavenders. Beautiful color. And this, this is all Wamsada. It's a debut yes. of a new collection from Wamsada. So uh, the top of bed, uh, the layering pieces, the sheets, the shams, that so really comes together to create this you know, luxurious bed, which of course is one of the most important parts of the master bedroom. I want to jump in. It just, it's so inviting. Good, good, good. <laughs> and also what's really great about this pattern is it has scale. A master bedroom should have mm, scale. So okay. you see the draperies, mm -hmm. the oversized curtain mm -hmm. rods, the uh, metal bases behind mm -hmm. us the bowls and candlesticks over there. Everything is about scale and grand. Is it because the room is larger that you want to have larger accessories? Is exactly. that the reason? Okay. Exactly. Yes. Okay. We also looked at the positioning of some of the furniture, so mm -hmm. you'll notice the chest behind you yeah. had been in a different position when we first arrived into the room. Right. And we wanted to be sure that there was enough of a break of wall space around it, so we've centered it here and then anchored it with this gorgeous um, piece of art behind you. Um, and I think that that helps to pull together the wall over here and tell you know a complete story. Now Rhonda was unsure with the artwork, right? Exactly. So this is kind of a step into what kind of artwork you can put into the room. Exactly. Absolutely. So we introduced a piece here and like also it. two pieces over there by the far side. Our work is hard. It's difficult sometimes. You're like, do you match the bed Do you match the wall? Do you not match anything? So I, I mean, I always turn to you guys because you know it all. So you always tie everything together. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, for our viewers watching, how can they express their own style with their bedding? What's some, what are some good advice tips? Well, the thing about this room is it looks grand and it looks expensive, right? It does. It really wasn't. This really? whole transformation was under $1,000. It looks more than that. The great thing about Wamsada is it's about color and quality, mm. so you can play with color and really have a luxurious end result. As we do here. And Absolutely. the comforters are sold as sets. So it's sold as a comforter um, and the coordinating shams, and that helps you again get started on building the components of the bed. Right, and I noticed you have a different color sheet too. So that's just kind of incorporating the same color family, but not Absolutely. exactly the same color. Right, and not to be afraid to experiment a little bit with color. Okay. Um, this is you know, a perfect example of a comforter cover that has a lot of different colors that you can play with. Right, so you could pick whichever you want. Absolutely, you could change out the sheet so that you, you're not always um, playing up just one note. You can really create different looks that way. Do you recommend doing the color on the bed as the same color on the wall? I would say it depends. Okay. You know, this is a room that we really wanted to create this serene, almost hotel-like feel. That's how I feel. It does. And feel the like... color kind of envelops you, and yeah. then it does carry through to what you see on the bed here. But it doesn't necessarily have to be the same. Mm -hmm. You know, in this case, it worked out really well. You mentioned the picture behind you. Right. Don't feel like every piece within the room has to match exactly. Okay. Because sometimes that pop of green is really what it uh, you know takes to, to pull it all together. And I think that's something we need to learn because myself, I know I feel. 
feel like everything has to match for it to go. And you just have to love what you put in the ground. Okay. If you do that, then you'll then love the room. Then it's all good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, where can our viewers find all the, the things that we've used here today? The accessories, the bedding, where can we go? Well, the great thing about all the bedding that we used is that it's available in stores now oh, okay. um, and also available on Wamsada.com or stores like Bed Bath & Beyond. So oh, all perfect. of this is available if you wanted to recreate the same kind of setting in your own home. Yeah, I might have to do that. <laughs> well, Edward, Cindy, thank you so much for being here today. And I think we should get out so the Clarks could come in and see this room. So exciting. That would be great. That would be great. Yeah, let's go. Okay. There's more military makeover when we return, so stay tuned. I'm the owner broker of Prudential All American Homes Real Estate, which is right next door to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I'm home to Special Forces and Joint Command Operations. Um, I've been a military brat since I was born. Um, my father was filled in the military for 22 years. He was in the, um, airborne, also filled artillery, and he started Prudential All American Homes Real Estate um, in 1985 as a family business. And 26 years later, we're still here and growing. All the training camps for the Delta Force, Special Forces Command are at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And we love having them there. We feel safe at night when you go to bed. Working with military families is very unique and very rewarding. Um, what we do with military families when they come to our office is give them what I call Real Estate 101. We explain to them how home buying works from start to finish. We also sit down and do what I call Real Estate 101 Finance, where we sit down with them and look at their current budget situation, find out what they can afford, look at their BAQ, which is their housing allowance, and make sure we keep their payment in the affordable range where we know they're going to be comfortable. We don't want anybody buying a home and, and living out of their means. We also look at location. Most of our military clients want to be close to Fort Bragg, so they must be at work early in the morning for PT at 5.30. So we try to keep them also in a location where they can get to work and get back home and change clothes and make it more convenient for them. Prudential's Military Advantage program is unique to the real estate industry and any active service member, family member, or veteran can enjoy its services. Visit hc.prudential.com forward slash military for more information. It's a military makeover here in the Clark home where Designing Spaces and Chevrolet present the group efforts of our partners with the express purpose to show our appreciation for those putting their lives on the line to keep our great nation free. Having Designing Spaces in our house the last few weeks has been exciting. It gives you a whole new outlook on how TV shows are put together. Um, your crew has been fantastic. I love it. I'm actually going to miss you all. A lot, <laughs> but I really appreciate everything that you all have done for us. I like the bedroom. It has got a guy's appeal, but it's got a girl's appeal as well. There's a little bit of purple, but I dig in the blues and the silver, so it's very uh, appealing to the eye. The biggest surprise has been how much energy and people and time it takes to put it together one of these shows. Uh, there are countless Marine soldiers and sailors out there putting it on the line every day, and and my heart and my thoughts go out to y'all and I only hope that the people of this production company can do some more nice things to those marine sailors and, and airmen. I'd like to thank Operation Homefront for even giving um, the Marine Corps and military families a chance to have something like this done and to every single person on this crew I'm gonna miss you guys. <laughs> you guys have been great. I really really appreciate all that you've done. Thank you for everything. On our next Designing Spaces Military Makeover, we complete our transformation here at the Clark Family Home with artwork. To see this part of the show again and to see the good people who made today possible, please visit our website at designingspaces.tv. For Designing Spaces Military Makeover, I'm Debbie Marie. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show or to find out how to be part of the show, log on to designingspaces.tv. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash dspacesTV or friend us on Facebook. Type in the words Designing Spaces. You can visit these websites to learn more about the participants on this edition of Designing Spaces.